There's going to be a lot planned in this video. I want to basically cover everything that I'm doing to set up another YouTuber with a live stream to help them live stream their creative woodworking. So that's coming up. Let's see what's in this one. It's not a really fancy new Asus disinfectant gaming RGB 4 meter black dragon, blue dragon. Come on, you could disinfectant. Can do it. There you go. What, what's the mouse, mouse name? A red one. There's, there's really fancy mice. Got a, a red one. Computer mice site now for gamers. Red one? No. Magic Dragon, come on, help me out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we carry on with the video, you saw a few fancy quick cuts there. That's coming up. I need to address a comment. On my other channel, I mentioned I had to get an iPhone and I called it pink. Apparently it's a rose gold. So just to clarify, I've got a, a deep rose gold uh, fiber, microfiber cloth to clean my computer with. So I thought I'd address that thanks to our sponsor. So the plan is I'm going to be setting up this for an additional live stream for a separate channel. So I'm going to actually show you a proper walkthrough. It's about time we did a proper step by step. So let me get straight into this. So we want to see what the limitations are and what could be better. So let's set this up. I'll show you some examples throughout this video of what it looks like and what the channel is. Um, but let's have a look at this first. So computer that's capable. So right now this is a Sony computer. It's quite a powerful system, but it is old. So I don't think it's going to cope at 1080p. So let me show you quickly this laptop. So it's a, a widescreen. It's a Sony. It's got NVIDIA graphics, which means it's got a graphics card, which we need for encoding our video because we're going to be using OBS. I've upgraded it to Windows 10 and I've put in a SSD hard drive as well as more RAM. So I quickly discovered that the laptop was just not cutting it. It's a 720p. We tried live streaming out and the processor was not coping. Um, everything was lagging. The video was not synced with the audio. So what I did is I quickly jumped onto eBay and disinfectant and a budget that we could use so i was able to pick up another machine it's not the best machine not the newest however if you look at the spec here it's an i7 fourth gen it's got eight gigabytes of ram we've got a dedicated graphics card which will actually help with the encoding process it looks like a nice, very nice machine and the price is very reasonable under 200 pounds when could you get a good laptop for that kind of price while well, you can't. So this is a desktop that we're gonna use. We're gonna get it uh, set up. So you can see here the spec and the information by the supplier and eBay was excellent. There's a lot of good deals out there if you look for them. This is gonna be a powerful machine which will have uh, enough cores to be able to multitask. And the pictures looked like there was a better power supply in there as well, which means we can upgrade the graphics card if we wanted to at a later point. So that's a quick look at the desktop machine that we brought. Again, we are basically setting up a live streaming computer that's the aim of the game. This keyboard that I use a lot in my live stream where you can switch between different scenes. And then let me update my keyboard here. He says, yeah. So now I'll go over to my desk and show you what else you can do. So let's have a look at that. Okay, here we go. Back to my desk remotely. Obviously when they're woodworking, we don't want them messing about the keyboard and mouse. You can have this in their pocket and use it as a remote control. What you will need is a chunk of additional cables to make all of this work for cables. We are going to need a HDMI capture card. And guess what? You can get a HDMI USB 3 capture card now for under six pounds. So I'm going to test that out, see what that does. Uh, also, we're going to get our trusted one that I always use, which is this one here, the unbranded one. It's gone down to seven pounds. So I bought one of those as well. In addition to that, you're going to need the cables like we mentioned. So the cable here is going to be uh, HDMI, two options and the HDMI converter. And what I'm also going to do is get some really long micro USB cables for those action cameras because we want to position them in interesting places. Okay, here we go. So now my computer's all the way over there. I plugged in the USB cable. What that allows me to do is I've still got space. I could stick a camera right in the top corner via USB. You know, I like my action cameras, but you know what? It's okay. HDMI camcorder to be able to get those uh, zoomed in shots. We saw one here for 30 pounds, which is a full kit. And we checked if it was a clean HDMI and it was not a clean HDMI. So we have to discover another one of this. How you do that is basically go onto Google, search the name of the model and see if it's a clean HDMI, or you could even message the seller and say, can you test it for me? So that's a few little tips there. So uh, the camera can be put in a waterproof case, which I have just over here such as that. So what will happen with that is you can put the camera within. You can use bits of the action camera to make a makeshift tripod. So you can see there, I've actually screwed together all the little adapters and you can see it will sit down comfortably like that. So you can kind of see that it will give you a, a view. Again, you can adjust it to make sure it's straight. 
that first action camera is a 1080p vibe action camera no memory card inserted and i've put a battery in there you don't need to put a battery in this camera it can run without batteries however some other cameras don't run without batteries so they have to have batteries what you will need is a chunk of additional cables to make all of this work wireless would be perfect However, that's a whole new budget and a whole new area. The area we're going to be using this live streaming setup in is going to be designed for woodworking. So they've already got braces around, which I can use to kind of hide the cable as it were, hide the cable. So that shows you that these types of cables can increase the distance. Again, I have two of these that I ordered because we can have two camera angles. Let's recap. We got our desktop computer. That was a fancy one because we're live streaming with it. We got some cables. We've got action cameras which we can use as webcams via HDMI out. Okay, so I think it's time we took all this gear that I've chosen for them now to go and set it up and get them live streaming. So let's go to this next segment. We're going to go and make our way to Think Make Share Studio and start setting up their live streaming setup. We're going to do a few test runs and see how it works out for them. So let's get into that next clip now. Okay, so as you can see, I've made it here to the Think Make Share Studios. I've got the setup and put it down now. So we've got the cable, power cable for the computer. I got an extra mouse to make it a bit easier to click around. Um, we've got a U USB controller. There's a bit of an issue now. The Ethernet cable for the internet is very short. So I've got a bit of kit here that allows me to extend it and have a lead go all the way to the back of the desktop. That's the first setup for the action camera with the cable and the cage long enough to kind of put where we want to put and move around if need be uh, we've got a battery extra battery there because one of the cameras needs battery to be powered here's a second one again it comes with the cage and the waterproof case and another cable different colors so we know which camera is which so basically the desktop needs setting up this is a desktop and it's a dusty environment so think make sure you're going to make their own enclosure i'll link you to the video of that so now let's get started. So the desktop is here. We're going to spin it around and start plugging everything in. So if you're new to computers, this might be helpful for you to understand. So the power lead goes in and we've got a separate socket um, power for the, the computer itself. Uh, power surge protected and we're going to plug that in and give that power. So that's got the power it needs. In addition to that, we need the internet cable. Remember, if we're live streaming, we want the best connectivity. And luckily, we already had some ethernet cables in this uh, segment of the studio. So we plug that into the computer. And then the next bit goes into this uh, extension coupler, I think they call it. Um, and then that allows me to plug in the existing cable and that has basically extended it. So this can be enclosed and fully protected. Uh, from the, all the dust basically a cheap old mouse just to get a bit, bit easier to click because the mouse pad on the usb isn't as intuitive if you haven't used it that much so the first action camera cable goes in the back usb cable and the second one as well i'm going to do a rough layout right here and then we can clean the cables up once we've set everything down an old monitor display uh, tv basically we're going to plug it in via hdmi just to test everything and make sure it looks okay and then we'll move on so the power again for this will go directly into the desktop computer in terms of the display and we're going to plug that in there now we're using a couple of converters to do this and let's turn this into the studio first we've got our little uh, additions of screws to make sure these stay put i've added the mount there and slid it straight in so the first action camera will be under the think make share or next to the think make share uh, plaque and this will be the top down shot for the main setting up of any work. So we're going to stick a camera into that and make sure it's in the right position and then drop in the power cable. So the power cable here you'll see is long as this camera can be removed from this and put into another place if any jigsaw work needs to be happening or anything like that. And here's a second cable. I'm going to route this over the light just for now so it doesn't dangle. And then we're going to put the secondary camera onto this beam here. And again, we're doing a quick little screw in there to make sure it doesn't drop. And this dry run is to make sure all the cameras are working. I'm going to set these up at 1080p or 720p. We haven't decided yet, but we'll see how what works best for the in internet connection here. So you can see the red power cable goes around there. A bit messy at the moment, but we can clean that up. And the gold cable goes over the top through the beam and onto another camera. 
and that is all set so what happens next well you can watch me i'm going to turn the pc on and when the pc is turned on you'll notice we need to go into obs and also while we're opening and powering on the computer each time with these action cameras you have to physically select pc cam so when the camera's turned on you'll see in the back of the camera is an option we go down with the menu and do pc camera and press ok so that has made that a camera now so i'll put that back in its mount and do the same thing with the secondary one that's the thing with these action cameras you have to physically turn them onto action cameras not too bad quick little button click and it's sorted out and then we'll go over to our desktop again we click on the plus icon and as you're familiar with obs video capture device add in a name for it use my keyboard i'll call it a and b to keep it simple capital a in the name for the first angle and because we know it's powered and it's ready there it comes up straight away universal uvc one camera is called so we'll just do a few little adjusting here i like to put a few things in i'll show you what i normally do so i'm selecting the camera device default is resolution but i normally do my custom to make sure it sticks at the full res and then we can extend that out the highest frames frame rates per second video format mjpeg i normally select color space 709 and color range full and then that's normally everything and then do ok and you can notice this camera is uh, the canvas is set as 1080p so i can pull that down so that's the first camera sorted and set up in obs nice and easy we're going to add in the second camera now so the you can see my hands there i've gone around just to give you an example view uh, i'm recording this on my phone so i can easily edit it up i might give you an obs recording if i have to and then add in the second camera in the same scene add and uh, video capture device create a new one and we're going to call it b and do ok and we're going to select the camera from the drop down and activate it and there you go beautiful so now i'll put that ok just to kind of get you the view that's a top down view a lot of table saw cutting happens so you wanted a top down view so you can show the table when he cuts big pieces of wood or whatever he's looking at working on so there you can adjust the camera easily as it is uh, on the mounts and yeah that seems okay let me give you a quick view of these with my camera so that's in the corner remember the desktop will be under the desk in an enclosed space that's the first camera on the top and then the second camera on the left i can even put a third camera in we're working on a hdmi capture card and another camcorder so you can actually zoom in onto intricate pieces of work so there you can flip between them and i set up hotkeys on this hotkeys allow you to set up shortcuts on your keyboard to make it basically wire wireless so this remote you can walk around with and keep with him f1 brings it to the first camera f2 brings it to the second camera so wherever he is he can easily adjust it just by clicking that little button there and keep that like a remote control which acts as a wireless mini atm to transfer between the scenes we want to add an extra one so we go add let's call this one escape to hold screen so when you press escape it would be a hold screen let's bring that right to the top and then to set that we basically go to the settings button over here and you'll get this window come up you want to use hotkeys and then you want to look for the titles that you just created so scroll down you'll see there my f1 switch to f1 scene is set to the f1 key f2 is f2 f3 needs to be f3 and because that is also set up on my obs the obs screen switched and then you can go escape will be the hold screen so let me just do the escape see this escape to hold screen so I'll press escape and that is set so now we can do okay basically wire wireless so this remote he can walk around with and keep with him f1 brings it to the first camera f2 brings it to the second camera so wherever he is he can easily adjust it just by clicking that little button there and keep that like a remote control okay so that's a little bit set up now we got to get ready for the streaming side of it we're doing a broadband speed test make sure you start off with this because you can set up your settings for the live stream based on how much speed you're getting we're getting excellent speed here right now about 20 megabytes upload to about 200 download so we're going to do a test stream and ramp it up basically so i'm doing it uh, 6000 kilobits a second for live streaming and the same amount for recording what that allows them to do is live stream and record 
uh, file to the hard drive at the same time if they want to edit it later on. So I've opened up the resource manager on the desktop. I'm basically live streaming a test stream and checking what the GPU and CPU is. You can see there when I'm recording and live streaming, it's using about 70-80% of the GPU and about 10% of the CPU. So I slowly worked my way around to find the best balance for this machine so we could do a multiple things at the same time without causing any problems. So this is basically the testing element of this process. We've got a little video playing on screen to live stream. And now we're getting to a better balance where we're actually getting the uh, graphics card and the CPU in harmony, which still gives us headroom to do additional tasks on the computer if they're encoding a video, had GIMP or put in a Photoshop or something. So it's basically going through the output screen here and changing the killer bits a second. The higher the number, the more detailed the video will be for the stream and the, the size of the file. So that was a nice little sweet setup for you and we are good to go. We're going to do a couple of test shots um, and streams and test it out. But you can see here I'm showing the keyboard in camera one and then I'll show you on camera two just so you can see exactly what it looks like. I've recorded this on my mobile phone quickly just to give you an idea of a full setup and we'll do a few demo shots at the end of actual woodwork going on so you can see what you can achieve with this. Hoping you found that useful. Make sure you check out the cards to look at more videos about OBS and how you can use it to live stream. And also check Think Make Share channel here where you can hopefully see more live streaming videos coming in future. If you're interested in woodwork and ideas in general, it's a good place to check out.